okay uh, uh, continuing from the previous uh, lecture uh, video clip uh, this slide shows the different uh, metals okay aluminum uh, titanium steel ductile cast iron and others and this is the sn graph uh, one thing which for the sn graphs that means the stress versus the number of uh, cycles to failure graph you, you need to under uh, you need to notice that the stress can be any stress for example it can be a maximum stress or it can be a stress amplitude for example in the previous uh, sn graphs it was uh, shown as the stress amplitude but we have to make uh, have to be careful when we are going to compare the results so we have to be sure that whether we are using the maximum stress or the stress amplitude or any other uh, parameters may or maybe the mean stress okay so, but normally we use the maximum stress value over here because that is the one which is the controlling value normally so here you can see that the see the behavior of different uh, metals under this stress so in this case uh, titanium and steel seem to have or the steel seem to have um, fatigue limits so most of the element most of the metals in this uh, seem to have fatigue limit but uh, this aluminium alloy does not seem to have any uh, fatigue limit similarly brass does not seem to have any fatigue uh, limit so uh, in according to these two schematic diagrams so we can see those uh, practical uh, examples uh, for the stress versus the number of cycles failure okay so that was it and then the next is this chart okay this chart is uh, about the stress versus these number of cycles to failure but here you can see that this is only showing for one metal aluminium and then you can see that uh, probability values are shown over here 99% probability 90% probability 50 and even 1% probability why do we need to show these probabilities yeah the thing is that this uh, stress versus the number of cycles data is uh, highly uh, scattered data which means that uh, even with very careful control of the experiments you may not get uh, uh, values for the stress versus the uh, number of cycles to failure in a very consistent way there, the data may show quite a lot of uh, variations over here so in this case therefore the view uh, the experimentalists uh, people uh, will need to plot more number of data okay so that they can determine the probabilities for the occurrence so it means that if you if we want to uh, use this chart so we will say that for example uh, at about 250 megapascal strength so this much will be the probability of the failure but that probability of failure is only about one percent at this many number of cycles okay but that uh, probability of failure will increase at a larger number of cycles is if you if we if I move along this uh, um, direction that means towards right the probability for the failure would increase okay so uh, so this getting this the probability of the failure for the sample by these charts is quite useful that means we will be more sure that uh, the results uh, which we are getting are uh, better or more close to the uh, reality okay so this is a this is the fatigue failure then how because since the fatigue failure is uh, uh, quite uh, frequent especially in mechanical in the machines uh, therefore we can also consider some of the factors uh, which can help to improve the uh, fatigue life 
one uh, the, uh, oh, there are a number of factors only three factors have been uh, mentioned over here so well the these factors are reducing magnitude of mean stress so it is obvious actually i mean the mean stress higher will if higher will be the mean stress then definitely the fatigue life will decrease so as you can see from this chart uh, this curve over here is for a higher uh, mean stress the middle curve is for next higher mean stress and the, this curve on, on the top is for the uh, lowest mean stress okay so as this mean stress value is increased so the stress and the number of cycles would also increase that means more number of cycles would be required for those stress for the failure of the specimen the next is about the surface uh, treatment uh, for the surface treatment uh, well sir, certain processes uh, can be uh, adopted to introduce the compressive stresses in the surface area okay or also uh, since the fatigue failure is very much uh, uh, dependent on the uh, cracks so the surface cracks can be reduced so the cracks in those uh, fatigue failures normally propagate from the surface towards the inside of the uh, body of the material so those surface cracks can could be reduced so there are there can be two methods or one of that method is called as the uh, short peening method and the other is method is called as the carburizing method such as in the um, production of the steel that means adding carbon into the surface of the iron so a little bit more detailed for these methods uh, you can for these for the for more details of these methods you can look into your into the textbook so in the short painting for example basically you uh, introduce uh, small particles okay those small particles are then uh, then introduce the compressive stresses so the why do we need to introduce compressive stresses because uh, the cracks results from the tensile forces so if we uh, fill these cracks or if we can uh, by the opposite forces to the tensile forces which are the compressive forces then we can uh, uh, move uh, against the forces of those uh, tensile stresses so the surface compressive stresses due to the plastic deformation of the outer surface layer so we can nullify the effect of those tensile stresses in the surface and then which will help quite a lot for increasing the fatigue life uh, next is uh, the next third step uh, which is mentioned over here is uh, about the some changes which can be introduced into the design one of that changes is uh, is to avoid the sharp edges so for example if this is a shaft which, which rotates and then there is a change in diameter in the shaft and then that at, at this interface of these two different diameter shafts if this change is abrupt then that means that will be the stress uh, that that point will become a stress concentration points so in order to reduce that stress concentration points a gradual change can be introduced by rounding the corners rounding the corners and then this will reduce the stress concentration so once you reduce the stress concentrations there will be less chance of the more uh, production of the uh, cracks and then it will help to increase to improve the fatigue life okay so uh, this was uh, something about the fatigue topic so next topic is the creep but that i will take up in the uh, next video